alhamdulillah in the holy month of Shahwal and the month of on and off, the month of binary code and the month of the reality of ten, one and a dot. To be a nothing, to achieve the nukht so that to be in the presence of the one and the only one is La ilaha illallah is Allah wa Jalalihi and the only one whom achieve the reality of the nukht and zero state is Sayyidina Muhammad and this is through Shafat al Qubra, the hadith of Prophet that describes the great intercession on the day of Yawm al Mashar, on the day of judgment in which each Prophet will be raised and their nations will run to them. And they run to Sayyidina Adam salam, his nation and say intercede for us. And the hadith describes that each of the Prophets describe their flaw and that they're not in a state of perfection and because of the flaw that they have they are in need of the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad And it goes in the rotation of the levels of the heart. That Sayyidina Adam will take his nation salam to Sayyidina Nuh salam, that intercede for us and Sayyidina Nuh salam will say, I can't, I'm not that one and that I got fed up with the testing of my nation and I asked Allah to punish them and Allah brought the flood and killed all the nation of Sayyidina Nuh salam who didn't accept his da'wah. And every Prophet in this hadith they say that, I'm not the one that we have to go to the presence of Nabi Ahmad and that all the Prophets bring all their nations into the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad and that Prophet accepts and begins and describes that he will intercede for all nations and that he will begin to make du'as that never heard before. And awliyaullah teaching that these are du'as and vibrations and sounds that because of his holy station that those sounds and those realities they intercede and they shatter every falsehood that people are carrying and only through that Muhammadan light to dress them because only the Muhammadan reality can forgive them. The light that they carry that they think is Allah's light is actually from Muhammadun Rasulullah Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan. Thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah, if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And that goes from Ayatul Qur'an, doesn't matter if it's one person or all nations and all Prophets that, Jauka wa astaghfirullah wa astaghfirukum Rasul means that when they come to you as oppressors that in its highest reality is on Yawm al Mashar when the Prophets come with their nations and they come as oppressors to themselves that they have to go to your presence. And each of the Prophets understand Ayatul Kareem and they understand that they are not to ask for Allah's forgiveness. They are not that one to ask Allah's forgiveness for their nations, that they must go to the presence of Prophet and that in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad they begin to ask their forgiveness. So means the immense reality of this system of a nukht and zeroness is the only way to reach the one. So when other people think, oh it's their Prophet, this Prophet, it doesn't matter what they think, it's the only one whom achieved that complete zeroness in which Allah called that servant Abdullah, Habibullah, 
Nabi Allah, Rasulullah and dressed from His Divinely Presence, these realities that became the doorway to become nothing and as a result of entering towards the nothingness was the only way to achieve the presence of the One, the presence of La ilaha illallah. Anything else with remnant of itself will repel. If there's any energy within it of itself, the nature of its existence will repel it from the presence of the One. This is just the law of that energy. So only in its negative and zero state, so it means if it has a presence, has its identity, has its characteristics, what happens if it comes into the presence is that it will repel itself because of its energy. And the only way to achieve that presence is in its zero state in which in its state of being off and entering into the presence of being off at that reality Allah rules that into its presence and then Allah sends from its qudrat and sends from the eternal energies and izzatullah wa izzat rasul means the izzat and might of Allah has to flow through the one whom represents the zero state becomes izzat rasul So it means this is off, as soon as Allah's might comes it hits at izzat rasul and the Prophet's light and energy becomes on. Only from that light it can be hit onto izzat al-mu'mineen and then down the chain through all their nations because izzat al-mu'mineen then is the Prophets of Allah Means then this power has a flow and from the hearts of their Prophets then to all of humanity. So it's an immensely important understanding that to achieve that zero state so that they have to have that complete zeroness, the complete emptiness of self. Some say, well how about Sayyidina Isa is a kent because people worshipped him. Now people even saying he's a ilahi, a god. That's not that zero state for the people, they're coming with an imperfected belief. If you have that belief it completely repels from Divinely Presence. So just them stating that belief is evidence enough that they have repelled themselves from Divinely Presence. We're saying the whole Divinely Presence door and secret is to be nothing. If you come saying that a man is God, you've a, the complete atrocity of that statement is the exact polar opposite of that reality. That you're telling us that on this earth there's someone who is that Divinely One on this earth and that it eats, drinks and goes to the bathroom and has none of the characteristics of malakut and paradise. So means these are a deep reality for those who contemplate that the virtue of what they say is the proof and the dali that this is completely not the way. We're talking about the path in which to be, nothing, to self-sacrifice, to bring your state to a zero state. And the only one who can teach that zero state is the only one created in that reality. That Prophet is created in that reality to be nothing in Divine the Presence. As a result Allah speaks to that nuh and becomes Holy Qur'an and becomes the vessel and vehicle of conveying Holy Qur'an. Had it had a, a bit of a oneness in it, the Qur'an would have been tampered with because then it would not have been the speech of Allah, it would have been the speech of Allah with the Rasul adding his own opinion. But because of the perfection on what Allah created of Muhammadun Rasulullah and the reality of Ummi, not unlettered, he's the master of all letters, he owns Sahib al-Kalam, he owns every letter. But the one in which Allah never allowed anything between Alif and Meem, there is no teacher, there is no one who taught 
There's no one who can say, I gave him these knowledges, I taught him these knowledges, I raised him with these knowledges. Because of the perfection of his creation Allah kept the purity of that reality of calling it Ummi, that between the alif and direct connection is the meme, that there is nothing between that. As a result of that reality and the perfection of the prophetic state, it is completely off and a purified vessel and vehicle for the conveyance of Divinely speech. So that when it's off Allah speaks and it's on and it speaks in the purity of that Divinely presence. As a result then we are the nation to receive that honour that we are the most honoured nation because of our attachment to the most honoured creation and light that Allah has created, in which all lights are created from Muhammadun Rasulullah So you can see and visualize now the pinnacle and the height of that reality, that all lights are created from Muhammadun Rasulullah So once they begin to know that, that's different than the ones whom are taught that reality, raised in that reality, the darajat of that pyramid then very high. Means they're all in the Muhammadan light but they don't know it. So then what to think of those whom Allah guided so that they know their Lord, they know their nafs, they train through their character, they train through their realities unto Allah began to show them their Rabb and teach them the realities of their Rabb. The reality of the Rabb of the lower lords that govern them, they fought those lords and continue to fight the lower desires until they rise into the heavenly realm and understand the heavenly kingdom and those whom have authority over them and they are authorized within the kingdom, Sultanan Nasira. Then Allah is asked, go through this gate of the Siddiq into the presence of Sultan and Nasirah, the authorized Sultan. That and Mawlana Shaykh would describe that doesn't need a tafsir, it's Sultan and Nasirah. It's a Sultan and you need a permission from this Sultan. So then this is a, an honoured nation and an honoured reality and a reminder for ourselves to seek a light and seek the company of those whom teach us to be a nukht and to be nothing. And only in that state of nothingness may we receive a glimpse of that reality. Means that through our senses what we hear if it reaches a state of nothingness means that we continuously clean the hearing that I don't want to hear bad, I don't want to hear gossip, I don't want to hear this dunya uh, garbage that coming in. As soon as it leaves the oneness of its hearing, it begins to enter into the zero state. And in that zero state they can begin to hear what Allah wants of a higher consciousness. From the Divine reality of that servant, their true nukht and their zero state that is always in Divinely Presence begins to convey to them, right? Because if my false state is governing my ears, what happens? My ego is always talking to me because my binary state didn't open in my hearing. I'm listening to my ego, I'm listening to the whispers, I'm listening to anger. So why are you thinking, oh, because it's just coming to me like that. You're listening to your waswas, the one who listens to the waswas, how can they achieve to listen to their nukht? So means the waswas has to be destroyed. So every state of our senses has this binary understanding. So means they negated their waswas, they don't follow conspiracies, they don't listen to badness and gossipness and every type of uh, evilness, they don't pay heed to it and give power to it because then it's developing a one. And as much as they give one into the ear what happens? They didn't reach the nukht. 
So then they negate, they negate, they negate, they don't care for it, they don't want to hear it, they don't want anything to do with it, the nukh dies and diminishes. When the nukh diminishes they're actually now able to hear their nukh talking to them. The, the oneness has to diminish so that the oneness is the ego. When they push away their ego from listening to their waswas what happens? Their zero state, their nukh, their soul, their higher conscious begins to give them guidance. So the each of the senses there are two. If you're going to listen to your nafs then the effacement and the nukh and the reality of the soul cannot communicate into the hearing of that servant. Then if they see and they're training through being a nukh and say, I want to be nothing, I want to be nothing but they see through their nafs means all day long it's their nafs, their nafs, their nafs, whatever the nafs wants is like a buffet non-stop and they don't know how to wash their seeing and wash their nafs then how can they reach? a binary state to see through their soul. So it means that if they diminish that one and they enter into being a nukh, a dot and a nothing. As soon as they enter into this nothing they can see through the power of their soul and they see what people don't see and each to the darajat in which Allah sends for them and for all the senses and if they take the power of dunya and only want dunya power and dunya authority and they don't negate the power of that ego and only when they negate their power and their physical power to react and act on something Allah will begin to open the reality of their nukht in which their spiritual power comes. Because many can use their physical to disrupt and to cause difficulty. Those who abstain from it but want to open the spiritual power in which they don't use the force of their hands and as a result Allah becomes the hands in which they touch. Means that their bayad is not by force but the bayad and the energy that emanates through their soul means that they operate through the power in their hands of a nukh. At that time, inna ladina yubayyunaka yubayyun Allah means now Allah's hand on that servant's hands. If they make du'a then that du'a and its energy is going up but the one whom wants to do everything by the force of their physicality and their nafs then they, they don't reach to the state of being nothing and only in that nothing state they now take from the soul's power of their hands. So means all our senses <clears throat> we have to negate them, they don't take the, the ego state of that, negate the ego version of that, the dunya material version and reach towards the nukh, the nothing state, the one whom effaces themselves. They efface their hearing, they efface their seeing, they efface the touch, they restrict their movement because even their feet where they go Allah describing that the step that they make is with Allah's qudra and might. So it means everything they're restricting. They don't take themselves to those places. People say, why you don't take? Well because the more you take to those places the more your feet become from dunya. But you want your feet to be from paradise. So then you self-govern and restrict yourself. That's why we say Ramadan is not once a year, Ramadan is all the time. These servants, Hudan al-Mutaqeen they teach people they know you're fasting all the time because you're always trying to fast with your hearing so that it stays in a zero state and has power. If you give it to become material your spiritual hearing will drop. Your spiritual vision if you give too much to the physical vision 
and don't know how to clean your eyes, your spiritual vision begins to die because it's either going on and off. If you're not practicing on how to bring it off so that your nukht can be on, then what happens? Your nukht turns off and your egoism turns on. At all times these states are active. Same for the hand, if they want to take their, their, their portion by force then they're not going to open their spiritual provision from Allah If they're going to take their feet into inappropriate locations then the one of their nafs is standing. Then they become what we to describe, they go to the higher floors and they have comfort and solace in their solitude. They understood that they will restrict themselves. As a result of restricting themselves their ibadah, their worship, their cleanliness is magnified because the tajallis are dressing them and they're not being depleted upon people in malls and shopping centers and, and on a, appropriate areas that are pulling away those tajallis. When they sit and isolate themselves the tajalli is still coming upon them, salamun hiya hatta mitna al-fajr. Means Allah for the servants are continuously dressing them, salams all the way to their fajr. So how can they keep the salams that Allah dressed them with at that beginning of the day is by restricting their feet. So they go only where they're necessary to go, the rest when they sit, they do their worshipness, they do whatever is not forbidden from Allah And then Allah is dressing them and blessing them means now they're entering more into their nukh state in which their qadam and their path is inspired by Allah The one whom doesn't use his feet in the direction of shaitan, he'll be inspired by Allah for the direction and his qadam to be in the way of Allah and his beloved Sayyidina Muhammad So means all our states, all our states have a binary reality. That's why these subjects are things to meditate on, not just we talk about yeah turn on and off and, okay can I ask what, what color is the paint for my house? These are things that people have to continuously meditate and contemplate. Every aspect of our life has an on and off. If it's on for material world, it's off for the heavenly world. The more and it's not going to be perfect because we have to live, eat and drink. But to understand the states then is important. Then the one whom is able to restrict the material and build more of the positive then begins to experience all of the realities of the nuh. And this is what the Nad Sharif and the, the recitations of the Nukht are describing, that everything is contained in that reality. That the people whom are running for the material world, imagine they didn't see anything of spirituality, how would they even understand the greatness and vastness of that reality? And they run for the silliness of the physical world and the immense insignificance of the material world. InshaAllah give us greater understanding and to contemplate these realities of shawwal inshaAllah and the month that after shawwal is zalzalah because the one whom reaches to be a nukht and reach to this state of nothingness then Allah dresses the nukht with the presence of a one. Then that soul becomes the reflection of the one. So the one of Allah reflects to the one of Sayyidina Muhammad The one of Sayyidina Muhammad dresses to the one of the Ulul Amr because they're all the realities of eleven, they reflect that which they love. You'll be with whom you love and whom you love will be with you. They become the mirror of this reality and this dressing inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzata amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen <coughs> walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bisiri Surat al-Fatiha. As Salaamu Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Narjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below.
the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.